Hey guys, David Clayton here with GuitarBreakdown.com and I want to thank you for stopping by watching another one of these lessons. Today we're going to do uh, something new. We're actually going to start a whole new series on the website where we break down really short one or two measure licks. So I'm not sure exactly where we're going to put it on the website, but it's just going to be called short licks, brief licks, something like that, and I'll, I'll let you know where it is. But there, we're going to do lessons based on one measure or two measure licks, or just a few note uh, ideas. And what we're going to do is we're going to examine those ideas and explore what we can do with them. Kind of like Carl did some Van Halen lessons that did something similar to this, where it was a brief six note lick, and he showed you a whole bunch of different ways to use it. Because one of the things we found out doing these lessons over the past year are there's a lot of people that really enjoy these four or five part lessons that go into depth and talk about you know every note of a, a whole 32 bar solo. But there's also a handful of people that really just want little short little nuggets. They want to get right to a lick and then start exploring with it. So that's what we're trying to accomplish here. So this is going to be just really short licks and we're going to try and make these lessons one part lessons and they're going to be maybe four or five minutes long but they're going to have a lot of content to it so hopefully you guys will get a lot out of this and you'll really enjoy it and what we're going to start with right now is just a simple jazz lick. Alright so this first lick we're going to look at is a 2-5-1 in the key of F. So the chords that are being played underneath are an F major 7 but actually in this article they're playing an F6 chord which isn't important you can play either one but this idea does target that sixth interval so it sounds good playing over that uh, F6 chord so you play that one for one full measure then for a, the next measure you do a half measure of the two chord which is a G minor 7 to the five chord which is a dominant a C dominant 7 and you go back to that one chord, right? And those are the chords that are playing underneath this idea. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to break down note for note exactly what's going on in the lick, and I'm going to show you some alternate fingerings and also point out that in the magazine article, they have a recording of this, an audio recording, of course, and the magazine transcription and the uh, audio recording have one note difference. So I will point, I'll show you where that is. So this lick starts on the fifth fret of the B string and it's starting on the last beat of the measure before the first measure. And it's just kind of a staccato thing where you just hit the note and, and you just, you don't hold it. And then you play, at the beginning of the next measure, you play the eighth fret and the sixth fret of the uh, B string. So you have then you go to the E string and you play the 8th fret and the 5th fret. So Then you go down an arpeggio from there. You're on that 5th fret of the E string. You go to the 6th fret of the B string and the 7th fret of the G string. So you have... Then you do this little jazz trill that is the 5th fret of the G string and you just hammer on the 6th and 7th fret. Right? So you have... Then after that trill, it goes down to the D string and it plays the 8th fret to the 5th fret on the D string. So the whole thing is... Then it goes to the A string and plays the 8th fret to the 7th fret. So the whole thing is... So now after it does that 8th to 7th fret on the A string, it goes to the 6th fret. It skips strings and goes to the 6th fret of the G string. Then it plays the 8th fret of the D string. Then it plays the 4th fret on the G string, and you move up to the 5th fret of the G string. So that's... And then it ends on that 5th fret. You skip the string on, uh, and you go to the E string. So that whole thing slow is. And 
Now, the way they transcribed it in the magazine, instead of going to that fourth fret on the G string, they played the seventh fret of the um, of the D string. Now, again, it's just a different. You can do that. It sounds great, but the recording was the fourth fret on the G string. So this is how it sounds the way it was transcribed. Right, just a little different. You have this note instead of this note that approaches this note. So you have as opposed to. So what we're going to do now is we're going to break this down and explore a little with it. Um, the one thing I find with a lot of students when I show them ideas, they'll come to me and they'll say, hey, you know, I, I just want to learn a quick jazz lick or a quick country lick or something. And I find that I show them that lick and then a couple weeks later we'll revisit it and we'll, you know, I'll say, hey, how, how'd you make out with that lick? And they'll show me and they have it down, they've nailed it, it, it sounds exactly like the way I showed it to them. But then when I watch them improvise, a lot of times what they'll do is they will play it exactly verbatim the way they learned it. Or if they learned it over, like if it was an A minor 7 lick or something, they'll only play it over an A minor 7 chord. Any other times they don't know how to play it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to explore a few ways of getting out of that rut and how to take a simple idea and use it in a bunch of different ways. Alright, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to break down one concept out of this 2-5-1 lick. You can dive into this and analyze it a bunch of different ways. You can analyze why without chords playing underneath it, you can hear that 2-5-1 progression happening, the target notes, the little arpeggio that happens. And you can take each one of those ideas and explore with those and come up with your own licks and everything. So that's what we're doing here. But instead of making this a five-part lesson on all the concepts out of this little lick, we're just going to take one small concept and run with it. So the concept we're going to do here is that little jazz trill that you heard. The hammering on of three notes. Real simple concept. That little trill of three notes. It's a very jazzy thing, especially bebop, old school jazzy thing to do. And a lot of people will learn this lick, but they won't take that and incorporate it into their playing because it just seems too simple. You know, a lot of people are looking for these really crazy licks to impress their friends, but that, if without that little trill, this lick wouldn't have sounded as cool if it went. Right? It just doesn't have the, that little swing feel to it. Now, what we're going to do is we can explore this a bunch of different ways, and that's, I'm going to show you how I would take this and how I would just explore with it for hours. So, take start out with a simple thing like pentatonics, okay? So you have A minor pentatonic, right? And just throw the trills in there, even three notes or four notes work, right? So you have these two notes, throw the trill in there. You have these two notes, throw that in there. These two. Right, do it in the next pattern. Right? And just start filling in those gaps. Now, you get that feel under your fingers, and then you can do things where, say you walk up the scale. You start out with that trill. Right? Or you can do it in between, in the middle of the scale. Right? Now, it, this is a start. It's not supposed to sound amazing and blow you away, but it's starting to get that feeling under your fingers. You could throw it into some of your blues licks. So if you have, right, this is just that typical trill that you've heard a million times. But a lot of times, you won't, you'll mess around with those pentatonic notes, but throw in that little trill somewhere. You got, right, you just throw that little trill in there, even if, now it's stopped on that sixth note, which isn't in that pentatonic, but we've talked about that, the use of the sixth note. So I'm targeting that sixth there. Now you can also, instead of doing all hammer-ons, you could do pull-off. So you have, right? And that sounds cool too. So what you do is you throw those in between licks that you already know. So if you have a lick like, Right? 
you could throw that trill in maybe here, right? So you have, right? And it just, it adds a little bit of flavor to what you're doing. And again, I would just suggest taking that all over the guitar, experimenting with licks you already know, and just in between the lick, trying to figure out rhythmically how it would work and just explore throwing in those little tiny trills. And don't just do it for like three minutes and then forget about it. Like really explore with it and practice it. Even if it comes, you know, it becomes monotonous to where you're not bored with it. You don't want to be bored, but you want to explore to a point where you're really starting to get it into your own playing as opposed to, oh, that's easy. I know how to do that. Now I don't have to practice it. Well, you'll never throw that in if you don't actually try it in a bunch of different ways. So that is the first lesson of this little jazz thing. You learned a nice little 2-5-1 lick, and you also took a little idea out of it and explore with that whole thing. All right, so I appreciate you watching this video, and if you guys like this, please click like and subscribe, and all those things helps us know that these are the kind of things you guys want to see more of. Also, head over to guitarbreakdown.com. We've got a whole bunch of free lessons and a whole bunch of really cool things going on over there. So I will see you on the next little short lick idea thing. All right, thanks, guys.